Hello everyone, I'm here to introduce Josh Bertram. He is a leader and a lecturer at RGU and he leads modules surrounding topics like digital marketing, digital PR, production and analytics. And his talk today will focus on digital adaptations in tourism, hospitality and events industry and what we can look forward to in 2023 and in a post-COVID environment. So I really hope you enjoy his talk today and please feel free to leave your cameras on if you would like. Here's Josh. Hi everybody. Thanks very much for coming along to my talk today. My name is Josh Bircham and I'm a lecturer at the School of Creative and Cultural Business. I mainly teach on digital marketing and that's really relevant for today when we're talking about digital adaptions in the tourism and hospitality industries. I will, as well as digital marketing, however, also be focusing in on the way that new technologies are being integrated into different parts of these industries. And we'll have a look at some useful examples, which will give us a bit of a guide, a bit of kind of an implication on how the industry is moving towards a more digital future in 2023 as well. So just to quickly summarise what we're going to be discussing today. Um, firstly, we're going to be looking at content, the way that content works and the digital marketing mix and how this might apply to the THE industries. We're then going to discuss social media, the importance of social media platforms, the way that it can be used and utilised by different businesses and tourism organisations around the world. We'll focus in on Instagram and TikTok, these emerging, well, emerged forms of social media, but relatively new forms that are being utilised nowadays. We're then going to talk about websites and apps with kind of a focus on mobile technology and the importance of mobile technology looking forward to 2023. And then finally, we'll discuss other technologies, new technologies, things like voice search and kind of um, kind of contactless shopping and those kinds of things which are also being integrated and are worth looking out for and looking forward to in the future as well. So I'd just like to start by introducing you to the concept of the digital marketing mix. Now, this is something that you might have experienced before or kind of looked at in different ways. However, I always think it's quite good looking at it in context, especially when we're talking about industries that quite heavily rely on content and PR. So having a look around this diagram that we've got up on the screen there, you can see that there are four options. Paid media, earned media, owned media, and social or shared media there. And there's different tactics or different things that you can do under each of these options. So when you're planning your digital strategy, when you're thinking about digital strategies in 2022 to 2023, you need to be thinking about things in the context of these kinds of structures, these structures which provide paid media that you're thinking about endorsements, influencer marketing, banner ads, display ads, and so on, around to earned media where you're kind of building partnerships, trust and content, and then through into your social and your owned as well, where you've got your own website platforms where you're producing content, sharing those content out on your own social media platforms as well. Um, there are, of course, crossovers between each of these aspects of the digital marketing mix, as you can see up on the screen, things that fit kind of between earned and owned or earned and social and so on. However, it is important to realise that these kind of individual tactics aren't the only things that you can do in and of themselves. In the examples that I'm going to give as we go through today's talk, I will be talking about kind of specific platforms. So, for example, we're going to talk about Instagram and the use of Instagram ads for an airline. It is important, though, to know that these are ads that are being put forward as part of a mix, a mix that involves a variety of different content on a variety of different platforms. And that's kind of the main point that I want to be pushing the whole way through. There are these new technologies, there are these new digital adaptions, but they can't be used in isolation. They should be part of a mix and they should be part of integrated campaigns that make sense in the context of what you as a business, what you as an organisation in the sector are wanting to put forward. So just to continue on on that theme, I was wanting to talk to you quickly about content today too. 
content marketing is more important and more used now than ever, but the idea of a focus on content isn't a new thing. And although we are seeing content being utilized more effectively going into 2023 through 2022, um, the idea of content being king has been around since Bill Gates wrote it in an essay for Microsoft in 1996. There's a reason though that content should be the focus of businesses and organizations, and especially in this sector. Firstly, content can help with relationships, building relationships with key target audiences and building a brand as well. Content can also be informational and educational, and those two aspects are also highly useful in an industry where we have individuals seeking to find out the best options and learn a bit more about the places that they are or the places that they're wanting to go as well. And we'll see that through the examples that I give a little bit later in today's presentation. Also, content does involve the use of influencers and partnerships. Content can be developed in that kind of earned way, but also in that paid way as well. Looking at influencers that match our brands, that match the industry and the sector that we're in, that have the right sort of audience that we want to talk to. Through them and through good quality content, we can start to reach further and engage with more people. Equally, content provides a really strong technical and SEO structure for our business. And SEO is something that's more important than ever going forward into 2023. It's been important since the start, but it's getting more and more technical. The way that the Google algorithm is developing means that it understands more and more what good content is. No more is SEO about stuffing keywords through a piece of text. No more is it about just generating article after article after article with the hope of hitting different search terms. Now quality also comes into play. So developing good quality, high value content that is liked and received by your target audience is now essential. And it's something that we'll also look at in the context of the examples that we go through shortly. So we'll start off talking a little bit about Instagram. There's a reason I've started with Instagram, um, is because I think Instagram lines up so clearly and so neatly with um, tourism and hospitality. Firstly, because it's that visual platform. It's image-based, so it allows you to specifically share good quality, good-looking images of places that your audience might want to go. It allows you to show off where you are in that visual medium, which is way quicker at kind of permeating into the minds of your target audience than traditional text. Equally, Instagram is an aspirational platform. So alongside being image-based, it's a platform where people go to look at where they want to be, who they want to be, and the kinds of people that they kind of aspire towards, the lifestyle they aspire towards. So as a kind of lifestyle, aspirational focused platform, tourism, the places you want to go and you're kind of being advertised to go to, and hospitality, the places you want to stay, those kinds of things are essential in that platform as well. So it kind of all blends really neatly and it means that the content feels native. The content that's produced by brands feels authentic and organic in this particular setting. Interestingly, it's got 68% female usage, which again kind of aligns with those lifestyle brand fundamentals that I did allude to there, but do appeal to this particular demographic. And equally, it's for the 18 to 49 year old age group. A large age group, but with a slightly heavier skew towards the older side of that age group than more emerging forms of social media like TikTok and Snapchat, although we will talk about TikTok shortly. Additionally, it's heavily mobile. I'm going to be going on about mobile optimization and the importance of mobile throughout today's presentation as well, but Instagram as a mobile application is something that can give you 
inspiration on the go, at moments where you might be thinking about making choices when it comes to travel and hospitality, Instagram can be there in your hand at that moment, rather than at those points where you might actually be sitting down to do a little bit more kind of established and dedicated research on the computer. That means that advertising can cut through because instead of going looking for what you specifically want, you can be recommended and suggested ideas based on well-positioned and good quality advertising. Additionally, um, Instagram is a platform which has now been optimized for influencers. Influencers which are currently very much part of the digital move, the digital adaption trend in the industry that we'll talk about shortly as well. So moving on, we'll talk quickly through an example, and the example is Aegean Airlines. Um, Aegean Airlines worked with a Facebook partner to basically come up with a highly specialized, highly optimized Instagram advertising campaign. So using this platform I've mentioned to its absolute utmost to reach the correct people. Good digital marketing, good marketing generally, is about targeting the right people with the right message at the right time. And indeed, Instagram's advertising features allow that. And it's something that I think we're going to see a lot more going into next year. Aegean Airlines is Greece's largest airline. And as part of this Instagram campaign, they focused on targeting. They put together specific ads based on destination, travel time and details that their audience had already looked for. So using that existing knowledge, they built very specific ads for a very specific target market who were already looking to potentially make these decisions based on flights and travel. They also then used retargeting. So that's when an image or an advert is automatically reshared at different points within a decided journey, a decided amount of time in order to potentially persuade those that didn't click on the advert or didn't follow through on that call to action the first time round. Retargeting is really value, valuable for um, tourism and hospitality, especially where the purchases are bigger, the purchases are higher value, and people aren't just going to immediately commit like maybe a lower value purchase would. So retargeting is essential if you want to keep at the front of your audience's mind and keep influencing them towards the things that you want them to do when they're at different stages of their kind of journey towards purchase. They also used split testing. So this is when they offer alternatively designed ads with different copy, different pictures, and then see how they perform with small groups before refining and then potentially split testing again until they've got the optimal advert for different parts of those target demographics. And Instagram's advertising features allow that. Now, retargeting, split testing, and all of this isn't anything new. It's been around for quite a few years now. However, I think we're going to see this even further going into 2023. And especially as algorithms are getting smarter, artificial intelligence is getting better, machine learning understands patterns and concepts more. And we've got this ever growing data bank that um, platforms like Instagram are able to tap into. So advertising on these platforms, I think is especially important um, particularly when it's an aspirational visual platform like Instagram. So moving on now, we'll talk a little bit about TikTok too. Um, TikTok is new, it's emerging, emerged. Um, it's got a very high kind of new user base, largely in the younger age category. Um, things that make it very useful for tourism and hospitality though are firstly, that it's highly visual. Again, it's based on image, which is processed quickly by the brain. Um, it's also an authentic format. So where Instagram um, potentially users can be put off by images that feel like they're overly aspirational to the point where they're not attainable, TikTok, on the other hand, values authenticity of reality. So when beautiful images or beautiful videos are shared, there is an understanding that this is probably less inauthentic than something like Instagram, where there is an element of filtering and curation. TikTok is a little bit more raw and real, which suits travelers, especially in that younger age demographic, who are really looking for these authentic experiences. 
It provides the opportunity to tell personal and specific stories as well. Um, equally, the native formatting of TikTok, so the styling and the, the way that the videos are formed, the trends that start, can be used well by tourism and hospitality brands, can be pervasive, persuasive, and also useful. And advertising can be highly targeted. And also using those emerging influencers on the platform, they can also hit really specific, really engaged audiences. Um, a quick example of the way that TikTok's being used in tourism and hospitality, TikTok themselves started the hashtag TikTok travel campaign, which was a kind of user-generated content or UGC-ish campaign where they pers um, persuaded people to produce content based on kind of hidden gems, hot spots, things that they find in countries that they could then use as part of this kind of overall platform hashtag. Um, a lot of tourism boards from different areas got on got onto this trend, including LA, Dubai, Seoul, Japan, Vietnam, and Malaysia. All of those tourist boards basically contributed to that hashtag, but also started hashtags of their own alongside hashtag TikTok travel. Um, in total, TikTok travel videos have now accumulated upwards and over 19.2 billion views. So it is something that people are engaged and interested in, meaning that there is definitely scope and room for growth here. I expect we'll see a lot more use of TikTok, TikTok advertising, but also this TikTok content production going forward into 2023. There's just a quick example of some videos from TikTok travel. You can see there is that slightly less kind of crisp, filtered, very curated aspect I was mentioning, which is the difference between this and Instagram. And um, you can see also that the way, the kind of slightly more personable way, the individuals in these particular examples are kind of looking out into the camera, they're eating local food. It's a really nice format for this kind of thing as well. And it's, as TikTok says, it's about sharing travels, tips and adventures that sharing, that one-to-one -one kind of personal element can help cut through the kind of drawbacks and negatives of traditional advertising. Moving on, we'll talk a little bit about influencers because influencers are so important in this industry. Um, you should be selecting the right influencer though with the right audience on the right platform. So I think we're gonna see a lot more movement towards smaller influencers and the use of influencers with more specific targeted audience bases into 2023. Influencer marketing generally is a massively growing industry. It reached $16.4 billion in 2022 and it doesn't show signs of slowing down at all as well. Um, it is really important to look at genuine partnerships. Those are the ones that have been the most valuable. And influencer marketing isn't always about that kind of, I guess, advertising and selling the experience side of things. Influencers can also be used to create high value informational and educational content, which can highly appeal to those in the hospitality and tourism sectors as well. Um, a quick example of that is the Rijksmuseum in um, Amsterdam. They put together this snap guide, which included 12 of the most influential of Netherlands influencers, but part of an educational campaign, which was a kind of Snapchat based guide for people to go around the Rijksmuseum and experience things with these influencers, providing information and context, but also educational snippets. So that's the way the influencers can be actually crafted into content very well. As a result of that though, the Rijksmuseum itself got a lot of earned media because the PR around the fact they'd used these influencers in an educational sense was really positive, which in turn generated SEO, which increased reach and website views and so on. So there are reasons why influencers can be used outside of the traditional influencer structure of the past few years, which is just in the advertising context. So I think going forward into 2023, you can expect smaller influencers being used more strategically in different ways. We can then look into some of the more kind of specific technology based adaptions in the sector. And um, firstly, I'd like to have a think about mobile technology. The fact that mobile technology is now pretty much universal means that there are a lot more options 
to adapt digitally on the go. Travel and tourism involve people who are on the go. They're less likely to be taking a laptop around with them than a mobile phone. And a mobile phone is something that they'll be using to check and research consistently. So it's also important for the industry to be there where people are at different points in their journey and in their experience. And um, looking quite specifically at air travel just now, we can have a think about it in terms of the airline experience. So traditional check-in desks are disappearing. We've now got this being replaced with apps like the EasyJet app, which allows you to check in, download your ticket, add it to your Apple wallet, go through the check-in procedure without having to speak to somebody in the airport. Um, this will streamline and speed up processes for people. And equally, this is now being built in alongside things like automated bag drops, automated passport control, biometric boarding checks, um, essentially reducing operating costs, but also increasing convenience for users and optimizing and using technology that they automatically will have on them as they go through the airport. Airline... Um, Airline experiences and travel experiences are experiences that often do end up in customer complaints. And the ability to sort of cut through those areas where there are often queues, setbacks, holdups, and potentially negative customer experiences is really valuable. And I think we'll see more of a move towards the use of mobile technology in intelligent and new ways, especially in the travel industry in 2023. Continuing on, um, e-commerce and purchasing is also an area that we've seen innovation. Um, TUI, a traditional high street, Thomas, um, well, kind of like, I guess, uh, not a state agent, uh, sorry, travel agent type model is moving towards post-COVID digital adoption plan where they're essentially cutting back high street stores in favor of a heavily optimized digital experience. They're making common platforms rather than a separate platform for Nordics that kind of all work on the same updates and the same e-commerce optimizations, which encourage people to make these big purchase decisions through an easy to use online platform. They're closing high street stores and that's adding to the efficiency and simplicity of the process for a traditional travel retailer it is important to optimize, to get those operational costs down alongside providing a better customer experience for those who are likely to now be shopping digitally for most of the things they do. COVID has changed the way that people shop. People have now moved to e-commerce more than ever. So there's no reason why traditional high street travel, tourism retailers shouldn't also be looking towards providing cohesive, intelligent, and positive e-commerce experiences. Just as an additional small point, um, there's now also the inclusion of just walk out stores in some airports. These are Amazon's kind of adaptions where you can go in, pick up what you want, and then leave. This streamlined process of shopping is something that fits in really neatly with the duty-free shopping experience where people do want products quickly, especially if they're in a rush for a flight without having to go through queuing and the kind of less pleasant customer experiences, especially if there's kind of quick transitions between flights where they're only able to pick things up quickly. And that's a picture of a Just Walk Out store in the Dallas Love Field Airport that you can see there up on the screen. Um, I'm just going to talk quickly about voice uh, as well now. So Alexa is something that's interesting and is being used for hospitality. Um, Alexa is kind of replacing that traditional customer service or room service. And we've got a quote there from Jennifer Hasea, who's the vice president for customer experience innovation, who said, we think about how our guests interact with technology in their homes today. And how do you bring that forward into the right and relevant way in the hotel experience? People are now comfortable with using automated assistance, using voice search, using voice commands. It makes sense that that's now integrated in with hotel experiences as well. And this is the sort of digital adaption I think we are gonna see significantly more of post COVID moving into 2023 also. Um, I've got a quick video that's actually kind of introducing Amazon Alexa specifically for hospitality. I'll play for interest just now because I think it does adds to this kind of idea of integrating these modern forms of technology into the THE industry as well. 
You work hard to delight your guests and improve your staff's productivity. We can make it easier. Introducing Alexa for Hospitality. Alexa, turn on the lights. Okay. Alexa, play my focus playlist. Alexa, order me an ahi tuna salad. Okay, would you like to add a glass of red wine? Yes. Quickly, I'd like to also talk about operational innovation. So technology, mobile technology, and kind of general streamlining of processes is something that I think we're going to see in lower cost hotel experiences, as well as the upper cost sort of luxury experiences like the Marriott Alexa we just looked at there. Um, Hub by Premier Inn, I think is quite a good example, which is aimed at millennials rejecting traditional hotel models or aspirational travelers, but still are looking for low cost experiences. Um, I think it's also ideal for that post COVID mentality where face-to-face -face contact is something that's now slightly avoided by certain travelers, especially cautious travelers in 2022, 2023. The Hub by Premier Inn model basically means there's no reception desk. There's a contact-free check-in where a pre-existing code is basically entered into a machine which then provides a room key that's automatically updated and then you can go to your room without having to speak to front desk services. And um, This sort of digital modern styles then continued into the rooms that have these kind of integrated services, integrated technologies where um, Apple TV is built into every TV room by room, things can be connected and it's all one kind of streamlined, digitally adapted, modern experience. That takes me through to my conclusion and I know this has been quite a quick, quick presentation for a lot of different points but Hopefully I've also, I've kind of covered some of the main things that you might be interested in. You might want to go away and look into a bit more. Digital adaption takes multiple forms from marketing through to technology itself. Content remains king. And we've discussed that in the context of the digital marketing mix. Even though that mix changes, content is still really important. You should be looking to emerging technologies, which are often normalized in other industries, but they're actually really well suited to THE. So things like those pay later shopping models we discussed, Amazon Alexa that we discussed, and also thinking about mobile experiences. People who are traveling, people who are looking for hospitality will often be on their mobile. So things like mobile experience, mobile applications and mobile technologies are something we're going to see more of, these on-the-go options and on-the-go platforms. Okay, that is the end of my presentation today. Hopefully that was useful to you and you could have learned something about digital adaption generally. Um, thank you very much for your time today and bye for now. Thank you, Josh, for that really interesting talk today. And thank you for everyone coming along and hearing his thoughts on the topic. The next session is at 3 p.m. and it is a talk from Vegas Dice, a first year PhD student at RGU. So make sure to join the next Zoom link and come along. I hope to see you all there. And thank you again for coming today. <laughs>